Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part one of my Flash CS5 tutorial, where I will explain everything you need to know about Flash to be able to create cartoon animations in Flash. Whenever you first create a file inside Flash, you want to click on File New, and more than likely you're going to create an ActionScript 3 file. It has the extension FLA, and FLA tells you that this is a working file, meaning it's a file that we plan on changing inside of Flash. Once you publish that file, it becomes an SWF file, meaning it is a file that we no longer are going to be changing. To make a comparison between Flash and Photoshop, an FLA file is kind of like a PS file versus an SWF file is a JPEG, which is a file that we don't plan on normally changing inside of Photoshop. In Flash, this white area here is considered your stage. This gray area here is considered your pasteboard. Anything in the pasteboard in the final movie will not show on screen. Down here you have your timeline, which is used to create animations, and your motion editor, which is used to tweak animations. Over here on the right side of, or of your screen, you can see your panels area as well as your toolbar area. If you do not currently have anything on your stage, by default, the properties panel is going to allow you to manipulate different information in regards to your complete movie. So here I can define my stage just by clicking on edit and change the dimensions both height and width. I can change the background color as well as the frame rate. But I'm going to choose to let that just be for this moment. Then you have your color panel up here. Here you define your stroke and your fill. You could flip flop your stroke and fill colors just that easily. You could change your stroke color just that easily or your fill color as well just by clicking on them and making those changes. In swatches you have custom colors that you plan on using over and over again inside of your flash files as well as custom gradients. And you can remove these panels if you should choose to to other different areas like I move the swatch panel right here. You can move those all over your screen. I'm going to first teach you about drawing shapes because I'm going to be manipulating these shapes with a lot of the other tools. First we're going to go over the rectangle tool. Within the rectangle tool you can define the stroke size. You can define what type of stroke, whether you want it to be a hairline, solid, dash, rag, and so forth. You could also come in here and edit the stroke type, just that simply. In regards to scaling, what this is paying reference to is whether you want, whenever the rectangle for this example is increased, whether you want to the stroke size to increase with it, or just increase on a horizontal or vertical or to not increase at all. Join pays reference to whether you want a beveled or a straight pointed corner or a rounded corner on your rectangle. And you can also define corner radiuses for the rectangle. If this is not set for locked and you change the corner radius, for example, to 20, you can see here that nothing else changed. And if I draw a rectangle on the screen, you can see that the radius is different here than it is in the all these other different corners that are here on your screen. However, if I set that to lock, now all of the corner radiuses are going to change here on your screen. Also in the toolbar area, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see this, if there is a little triangle down here at the end of one of these points, that denotes that this is a flyout menu, meaning that there are other tools hidden underneath of that specific toolbar tool. So that's what that pays reference to, and it's commonly used. You can also zoom in and out on your stage using the magnification tool, or you could hold down Option and zoom out just like that. And if it gets all wacky, you can come over here and say Fit in Window. It'll automatically fit your stage in the center of the window. And inside of Flash, you, you use bitmap and vector art, but for the most part, you use a lot of vector art because that's the way Flash is set up and that's why Flash files are so small. I'm going to reference something here. You can see when I'm drawing this rectangle that I have down here on the screen, I have an option to draw a rectangle as an object or a merged image. An object drawing doesn't merge with other shapes whenever you put them on top of each other. So let's create an object drawing like this. And if I come in here and select this object drawing, you can see that it is, these are not merging whenever they are placed on top of each other, which probably makes sense to you that they would operate that way. However, if I come in here to the rectangle tool again and use merged drawing, and to make this really simple, I'm actually going to come in here to the stroke area and I'm actually going to set the stroke to none and this is by the way how you would set the stroke to none. I'm going to draw my rectangle and I'm going to draw my other rectangle and I'm going to come in here I'm going to select this rectangle put it over the other one unselect it you can see they're joined now and that is merged 
drawing and the way that it works. Now let's say that I actually came in here and drew another rectangle with a different fill color and then would come over here and drag this onto that guy and then pull it off. It's actually going to pull part of the image that was underneath of it along with it. So that's the difference between object drawing and merge drawing. But if we wanted to turn this rectangle we have here on the screen into an object, we'll simply just click on modify, combine objects, and then click union. Now it's considered an object. And if you wanted to change it back into a merge drawing, you'd leave it selected, come up here, hit modify, and then hit break apart. Now it's back to being a merge drawing. And that, for the most part, are all the different things you can do with that rectangle tool. You can also choose to just draw these rectangles always as objects. These are primitives which allow you to really simply come in here and make all kinds of different changes. There, I did that with the sub-selection tool. If I drew another rectangle, I could also do this with a regular rectangle tool also though. I drew this rectangle and then I come in with a sub-selection tool. It's going to select all of the points that are inside of this vector artwork while the regular selection tool is not going to do that. Right? We could also come in here and to show you another thing a selection tool can do, if I just draw this little biggy zaggy little thing right here, come in here with the selection tool, select all of it. I can then smooth out all the corner radiuses just like this, this line or make them more jagged or pointy just by clicking just like that. I'm going to come in here and draw two more rectangles on your screen. If I select them, now I'm going to go over the alignment tool. If I wanted to justify these so that they were exactly in the same position to the left, I would click on the alignment panel. Just click on align. It did that. If I want to center them, I would do that and right justify them this way. I could also come in here and draw another rectangle. Select all those different rectangles and the alignment panel also allows me to distribute. So these would be an equal distance apart and I could also do an equal distance if they were aligned horizontally or I could all set them to the same exact width or the same height and now they are essentially the same. could also come in here and I'm actually, you're going to see here that I'm going to change the stroke on this rectangle and it's actually going to affect every other tool automatically. It's just going to change that. What I want to do here is change the join to a miter join so that it's pointed instead of being that curved thing. But also I have to change the radius and since it's locked everything else is going to be locked. Okay, so there's a rectangle the way that I would like to have it set up. Now I'm actually going to select this rectangle and show you how you use the transform tool to manipulate it. And then just click the mouse and hold it and I can rotate it just that simply where I click on skew, and skew it left or right, or up and down. And I'm not going to cover the 3D rotation at this point in time because the 3D tools can only be used to manipulate symbols. Just drew another rectangle here just so I can show you this other transforms tool that's available to you. I can rotate it just like I did before. I could distort it like I did there. I could also skew it like I did there, and it provides all kinds of different types of distortions. And most artists either use these tools or they don't use them. It's totally up to you. I, for the most part, do lots and lots of drawing. Before I make this go away, you also have your lasso tool, which allows you to come in here and select odd different shapes. And you also have your polygonal lasso, which will allow you to click. If you have ever used an Adobe Illustrator, you're well aware of the pen tool, and it works just like it does in Adobe Illustrator, as well as in Photoshop. And of course, with the sub-selection tool, you could then come in here and edit these different points, or you could come in here and add additional anchor points to this guy, just like that. So that's how that pen tool works. I'll cover the text layout framework in another tutorial as well, just for brevity. You can also draw lines. I already went all the different things you can do in regards to editing and changing strokes previously. And then you have your pencil tool. Now again, you can create either with object drawing or with merge drawing. And the difference between the pencil tool and the brush tool is that the pencil tool draws strokes while the brush tool draws fills. And if I choose to make more straight edged or pointy drawings with the pencil tool, I would use that option right there and that's going to automatically make my pointed drawings more pointed. However, I might also choose to have these be more smoothed out and it provides that option as well. And that's pretty much all there is to know about the pencil tool. Then you have your brush tool and it has a gazillion different options. 
Again, you can either draw with merge drawing or object drawing. Lock fill applies to gradients across multiple different shapes. I'm going to save that for a future tutorial. Say I draw a rectangle and I then come in with the brush tool and I choose to paint normal. Well, if I choose to paint normal, remember it uses the fill, not the strokes and then paint over top of that shape. You can see that it shows up and it paints over everything. I'm gonna shut off object drawing here just for a minute. And if I create another rectangle inside of here to demonstrate how paint fills works inside of Flash, I'll select paint fills. And you can see that it did not paint in the stroke and only painted outside of the stroke and where the fill area is. If I undo that and then come in here, I can also paint behind any of the objects on the screen, just like this. You can see how they showed up, undo that. Or I could specifically paint just in a selected area, just like that. If I selected the green area and then drew in there with the blue and it did not affect the stroke nor outside on the staging area. So that's how that guy works. You actually choose your brush size down here and that stays the same even if you scale so let's, for example, if I draw with a stroke here, oops, I have to first shut off and go back to paint normal. But if I would draw with this stroke at this point and then scale out using the magnification tool, like so, and then redrew another brush stroke, you can see that the brush stroke stayed the same even though it's going to look larger when I zoom in. So the stroke stays the same size whether you're zoomed in or zoomed out. You could also define different brush shapes like this. And what's really neat is if you have a pressure sensitive tablet, which I have a Bamboo Fun, which is by the way the best tablet in my opinion for the price, you're able to come in here and actually draw very specific changing width brushes. And that for the most part is all of the basic things you can do inside a flash. I didn't cover some of the things that are just common sense, like the eyedropper tool, which allows you to copy different colors. Well, there I actually copied the, the stroke for this and applied it to that stroke right there. And then obviously you have the eraser tool, which I have right here, which is used for erasing. And the magnification tool, which you use to zoom in and zoom out on your stage. And finally, just to impress you, there's a deco tool inside of Flash, which you can use to apply all kinds of wild and crazy different designs automatically. So that's pretty much all the basics of Flash CS5. I'll be covering infinitely more complicated things in the future. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Till next time.